All right, so Apple is coming out with this new VR headset. They just released a trailer for it. And, you know, transhumanists are freaking out right now. And now that Apple has done it, everyone else will follow it. Xiaomi, LG, Samsung, whatever. There'll be a bunch of competitors on the market. And apart from the obvious health issues and poor technology, battery life, whatever, and undoubtedly those things will improve with time, I want to talk about the real issues here. You know, like these guys, these guys have literally just built a headset from Ready Player One. And you know what kind of world? Ready Player One takes place in? Yeah, that's right, Ohio. So I'm gonna break this video down into three sections. The first thing I wanna talk about is basically this thing is the death of all forms of privacy because if somebody in a room is wearing this thing and you're in that room with that person, you're screwed. Like it can see everything. It can see everything around it. It can see the person who's wearing it. It can see the eyes, their face, everything. It can track the movements of your face. This, like when I saw this in the trailer, I just freaked out. I started listing all the stuff that it could begin tracking, all the possible ways that they could use this to track you. It's it's ridiculous. And they can know everything you do, everything spatially. Apple could literally not know just where you are, which they can already do with a GPS, you know, in your phone, but everything and everyone around you. So it could track people who don't consent to the privacy laws, you know? So how are they going to legally, you know, step around that? It doesn't really matter because technology does not care for law. That's an important message I want to get across. You know, this thing is super dangerous and inherently wrong and just in case you think that the linux alternative or you know some like you know competitor that comes out of it will be better for privacy here's a quick little side tension about this stuff making things open source does not fix inherent issues in design if you believe that you're an absolute clown because you can't make an open source VR headset and still have problems that are fundamental to it. The idea of it tracking other people and showing you to, you know, things on your screen and blocking out your surroundings, that is just inherently wrong. So that moves me on to the next point which is people will use this thing to cancel out reality, you know? In the trailer, they showed this, this I think this lady on like a train or so I think it was an airplane actually. And you turn a knob on the VR headset, you turn the knob. And once you turn the knob, it basically deletes reality around you. And all you see is the VR world. And now the thing is actually a screen in front of you. It's not glass as it looks like in the pictures. It's actually a screen, which means it can genuinely block out all light and everything around you and make you feel like you're in a completely separate room. Now, first of all, that should be terrifying to anyone, absolutely, obviously. Uh, but second of all, people are already escaping reality with things like movies, TV, social media. We've never had a generation before that has consumed so much Netflix and so much Hulu or whatever else the, the kids are watching now. You, you know what I mean. Uh, and so people are going to chow down on this kind of stuff, like the ability to just watch a movie and completely zone out. I already see this when I go anywhere in public. There's people wearing headphones, those stupid noise canceling headphones and people wear them. And it's like they're not there. You know, they're not in reality right now. They're in the headphone reality. They're listening to music, doing whatever. They're, they're separate. It's distracting and people will abuse the heck out of this thing when they get it, you know? All right. Now, third and lastly, it wouldn't be a dingy video about VR and technology without me talking about the dystopian aspects of artificial intelligence. Can you imagine, can you just imagine if you combined this headset with a powerful AI? It would be terrifying, you know? Uh, Apple, Google, Facebook, they've already got demos out for uh, VR humans. They're already, you know, developing the capabilities to to, first of all, copy your face and make a VR copy of you, like a kind of fake 3D model of you. And they're using that for FaceTime with this product. So it's already, you know, it's already done, you know. Can you imagine if instead of a person, I just made an artificial person, you know? And then I plugged it into some powerful AI that could generate a personality. And in people, you could basically make a fake person. You could make fake life. And then you could start making, you know, fake worlds and fake societies and fake everything. And with it being able to block everything around you, people could go home and instead of escaping by watching a movie or watching TV, they could escape by literally going to like a different world. They could just, you know, portal through with their VR headset because it blocks out reality and they can talk to their AI friends. You know, I have friends, but they're AI. They go to a different school, you know, that kind of thing. That's terrifying, but it's probably, you know, possible with this thing. So there's a few things I want to end the video with, you know, positive things because I don't want the video to be super bad and sad and negative. So first of all, one positive is that people are at least reacting negatively to this birthday scene in the trailer where this father wears the VR headset and films uh, his kid's birthday and people are being like, wow, that's really creepy. Like, it's really, you know, 
he's not in the moment. And I think that's on one side, I want to say that's mostly because people aren't used to the technology yet, because if you had a phone out, I don't think people would be freaking out like if you had the VR headset out. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably become normalized. But I guess it's positive that even the most brainwashed of these Apple users understand the problem with this technology, you know. Uh, but then the second thing I want to say is props to whoever's, you know, responsible for actually building this thing. The engineers who are responsible for these manifestations of the Antichrist are actually quite good. Like it's, it's pretty powerful from what I've heard. It can track your hands and the space around you really, really well. Obviously, it's terrifying in prospect, but it's a uh, pretty impressive technology. Um, this video wasn't really meant to shock or, you know, offend anyone. So if you feel offended or shocked, please tell me in the comments and I will not reply. Uh, but yeah, I've been Denshi. Goodbye.